Ready or not, red hot sexy menopause. Are you in? (laughs) Well, then this episode is one you're definitely going to want to tune in for. So strap on your shoes. Let's head out for a walk. And I've got something really special for you. So literally the Flipping 50 podcast is about nine years old. So I've been doing this for a while. And some of the terms and terminology that we unpack today, I've never heard of. So chances are you may not have either. We're going to be talking about bioregulatory medicine. In fact, European bioregulatory medicine. And we will unpack that for you. We'll talk a little bit about thermography. And it's not just what you think is that substitute choice for mammography, but there's more to it than that. We're going to talk about the importance of your lymph system. We're also going to talk a little bit about dentistry. Yeah. So we're going to pull all those things together in this episode. I'm Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to Flipping 50, where I address your top struggles and concerns, and I share what to eat, how to move, and how to change your mindset so that you can have the energy and the vitality that you want, need, and deserve in this second and better half. This episode, before we dive in, is brought to you by the Flipping 50 Fitness Specialist. There are two options, the specialists for those do-it-yourself fitness professionals and health coaches, and then there's the advanced specialist for those who prefer to have it all handed to them. Business in a box, you have the ability to use all the forms, all the sheets that I use, have it very organized and ready to use at your fingertips as soon as you get started. You've got a special Facebook group where you can get support and all of the information that I've used to help hundreds of thousands of women flip their second half with the energy and vitality they want right at your fingertips online, conveniently to study at home, full of CEUs for your continuing education, but career changers and life changers for women. So if you work with midlife women, check it out. I'll leave it in the show notes. It'll be flipping50.com forward slash specialist where you can learn more about that. Let's dive into this juicy episode. My guest today is Dr. Sharon Stills. She's a naturopathic medical doctor who helps perimenopausal and menopausal women to pause and evaluate life so they can live their second act of their story stronger, healthier, and sexier while aging backwards. Using her 20, more than 20 years of experience and extensive training and background in European biological medicine, anti-aging therapies, and bioidentical hormone replacement, she's successfully helped thousands of women transition gently through the different stages of their lives with all natural methods. Dr. Stills is passionate about strutting the word about her signature Red Hot Sexy Menopause program, the philosophy she developed for you to reinvent your health, explore your spirit, and discover your sexy so that you too can create and live the life you desire and deserve. She founded and ran one of the largest and most successful naturopathic clinics in the country for a decade and is the host of the Science of Self-Healing podcast. She's an expert physician for Women's Health Network, and she educates other physicians as the co-lead North American lecturer for the, about, you're going to have to help my pronunciation skills here, Paracelsus, did I get that right? Yeah, Academy <laughs> in Switzerland. Patients work with Dr. Stills in a variety of ways through telemedicine consults and her life changing retreats for individuals or small groups in healing and rejuvenating locations around the world. Some patients even fly out to see her or fly in just to get the chance to work with her one on one. And she's here with me today. Thanks so much for being here. 
Oh my goodness. Thank you for the nice intro. You know, you never read your own bio. I was like, oh, that sounds really fun. (laughs) (laughs) She sounds fun. I like to know her. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Well, you're so welcome. We should tell everybody we should, I should have actually just had her come over. We could have talked across the table because we're that close, right? (laughs) That is true. That is true in sunny, sunny Phoenix. (laughs) So good. All right. So, you know, I would love to dive into some questions about some some of the terms that I read. I want a little background on that and we'll get there. But I think it's first nice, especially for you being a female and being of age legally to be here talking with me today (laughs) and let our listeners know your story. So, you know, I like to phrase that you could be a lawyer, you could have been a teacher or a plumber, but no, you chose this. Why? Mm, that's a great question. And I definitely have a story. And I, and I like to think that I didn't choose this, but this chose me from my life circumstances. And it was a way of finding out how to survive and how to heal my body. So I spent my childhood very sick with severe allergies, severe asthma. I was at the doctors, in the hospital, in the oxygen tents, sometimes more often than I was home, so much so that the pediatrician wanted to put a plaque above one of his examination rooms with my name on it, which, (laughs) you know, it's nice when you have like something dedicated to you, like at a college or something, but having an exam room at the doctor, not really so nice. And so I just grew up very sick and very unhealthy. And then I had my first son. And so I had the allergies and the asthma and that went into addictions and depression and being overweight and headaches and problems with my cycle and just pretty much about anything you could be dealing with. And this is in my teens. And so I had my first son. I got pregnant when I was 20. I got married young. I got divorced young too. But at the time (laughs) I got married young and I started to get a little concerned. I thought, gee, I'm having a baby and I don't want him to be sick like I was. And I happened to be living next door at the time to a friend whose brother was, of all things, a colon hydrotherapist. And this is back in 1989. So this is before the internet, before Mm. holistic medicine was really very popular. And so he started teaching me about how you have to clean your colon. And she actually had a colonic machine in her basement. (laughs) And so that was my first introduction. But from there, I got really into nutrition. And it it just made so much sense to me. And so I started studying it initially to help my son, to make sure he wasn't sick like I had been. And at the same time to start helping myself because now I'm in my early twenties and I don't want to be sick anymore. And so I really dove into nutrition. That was just such a passion for me. And again, it was back in 1989. So it wasn't like, oh, I'll go online and Google gluten-free diet. That, That wasn't available. So there were very few books to read. There was no internet. And I was just kind of scrounging around trying to figure this out. The the health food section at Wegmans, which was the health food, like the Whole Foods back then in Buffalo, New York, where we were living at the time, had half a shelf with some, maybe a jar of organic baby food. It it was very limited. And so I started searching and then fast forward uh, two years later, now I'm 23 and I have two babies now and now I'm getting divorced and I have to figure out what I want to do with my life. And I had heard about this doctor over the border in Canada who did all sorts of things naturally. And so I went to visit him and I just remember standing in his parking lot and saying, I'm going to do what he does. Because at the time I hadn't gone to college, I had these two kids and I thought I can go back and do secretarial work and struggle raising my kids on my own, or I can follow my passion. And my passion was, I was just eating, breathing, living, anything I could get that had to do with natural healing, herbs, nutrition. And so I decided I was going to be a naturopathic doctor like him. And that's what I did. I just set my mind to it. I had, at the time, I didn't realize you had to first go to undergrad school. And so it took took me 10 years. It was a 10-year journey while raising the kids. And along the way, I became a massage therapist and iridologist and a nutritionist and all sorts of things. And I went to school 
in mind that I was going to be a pediatrician because I thought I've learned so much about how to help my son and I want to do this for other parents because it wasn't easy. And so I went to naturopathic medical school here in Arizona, actually. And in the clinic, I specialized in pediatrics. I did a lot of psychiatric care. I had a brother who had committed suicide. So that was also something that was interesting to me. And I wanted to be a part of helping people psychiatrically, but I was seeing pediatrics. So fast forward, I graduate, I open up my clinic on the East Coast and I'm going to be a pediatrician, and my seventh patient in the door has pancreatic cancer and is told he's going to die, and I've never seen a cancer patient before. So I'm like, okay, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do here, but I'm going to help you because it sounds like I'm your only hope. And so I helped him, and he ended up curing his cancer, and so it kind of set me down this path of working in oncology. And on Long Island, breast cancer is very prevalent there. So I started working a lot with breast cancer patients. And at the same time, I had another patient, and this is where we get to the menopausal stuff, come in and she had Suzanne Summers' book. I believe the first one was called The Sexy Years. And she had this book in her hand and she was like, I want this. I want these bioidentical hormones. And I, my first reaction was you want me to take advice from Suzanne Summers? She's the <laughs> she's the dumb blonde on Three's Company I watched growing up. <laughs> but I, you know, I have an open mind and I said, give me the book, let me borrow it and I'll read it and let me see. And I read the book and I thought, wow, I guess that was just a character she played on TV because she's got a lot to say here and it makes a lot of sense. And with my additional training, I can really help a lot of women. So I went back and I helped this woman and I got her on the bioidentical hormones and did all the other things I do that we can talk about today. And she got better and she was so happy and her husband sent me flowers and everyone was happy. And women just started coming because they just needed another solution. And so my practice grew into this huge helping women through menopause. And at the same time, so I'm in my, I was in my early thirties back then, this is 20 years ago. I had struggled with my own hormones. I used to have such bad PMS that people, I was so bloated, people would ask me when my baby was due, which was super embarrassing. And I never felt good. I was sick, not feeling good, bloated, headaches, craving, crying, angry, the whole thing, breast tenderness, constipation, three weeks out of the month. And then I would bleed and I would have a good day or two. And then the whole cycle would start all over again. So here I am helping this woman with menopause and her hormones. And I thought, hmm, one of my philosophies and one of the oaths I swore when I became a physician was physician heal thyself. So I thought I better start looking at my own hormones. And so I started to apply these things to myself and my my life changed. All of us, no one asked me if I was pregnant anymore, which was super nice. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I started to have balanced hormones. And I then, when I went through menopause, I was on the younger side. I was 48. I never even had a hot flash. There was this one experience I had where I was like, is that a hot flash? I'm not really sure. Maybe I'm a little hot, but I never had a hot flash. And that's because I balanced my hormones when I was pre-perimenopausal, perimenopausal, so that I just sailed through menopause. And I, to celebrate menopause, I climbed Kilimanjaro and, and it worked out perfectly the the airlines lost our luggage and we had to start our climb two days late. But because of that, I literally stood on the summit of Kilimanjaro one year to the day that I had my last period, which is the formal medical definition of menopause. You don't have your period for a year. And I did that to say to myself, and to anchor in that this is just the beginning and aging menopause this is not a reason as society would like us to believe that i'm that it's the end that it's the beginning of the end that i i'm physically not going to be able to do anything anymore that i'm getting old and fat and rigid and all these things and so that's why i did that for myself to say this is my sacred second act and i'm standing on the tallest freestanding mountain in africa <laughs> That is very cool. Boy, I love that story. <laughs> awesome. All right. 
I want to ask you something about your, in the bio, you mentioned European biological medicine. What exactly is that? What does that mean? So European biological, or we call it bioregulatory medicine, is the, it's the functional, the holistic medicine that comes from Europe. And Early in my med school days, I noticed there were these doctors who were getting amazing results with whatever they were doing, and they they were just in a class of their own. And so I was like, well, what are they doing? And I learned that a lot of them were using these remedies called the Sonam remedies, and they were remedies from Germany. So I ended up working for that company, and I ended up, while I was in med school, lecturing around the country to doctors and teaching them how to use those remedies. And through that, I got very involved with the Paracelsus Clinic and studied with Dr. Thomas Rao and Dr. Vertman. And I just became really immersed in the European way of thinking. And so European biological medicine is foundationally deeper than functional medicine. So functional medicine, and I'm not saying anything bad about functional medicine because I utilize functional medicine in my practice as well. Functional medicine is definitely a step better than allopathic medicine where it says, okay, let's look at your gut and let's see what's going on in your gut. Oh, you have a low probiotic, you have a low lactobacillus, let's give you lactobacillus to bring up that population. Whereas biological medicine is looking at the terrain of the body. So we spend a lot of time looking at the extracellular matrix, the space between the cells, which where I believe is where health begins and ends because you have to have free fluid movement of the lymphatic system through the fascia to get things into the cells and to get things out of the cells. We want to get good nutrients in. We want to get toxins and waste products out. And so European biological medicine has a big emphasis on dental health where one of the first things I do when I see a patient is evaluate their dentistry. Do they have amalgams? Do they have root canals? Do they have implants? And we have to get the mouth cleaned up because each tooth has a connection to a meridian from the traditional Chinese medicine point of view. So for example, your front teeth are related to your kidney and bladder meridian. And on your upper molars, on both sides, there is a tooth that is related to the stomach meridian and the breast, the stomach meridian goes right through the breast. And so breast health is intimately related to that stomach tooth. And what we see is a lot of women who have had breast cancer have root canals on that tooth. So when you go over to Europe, before you even see the doctor, you see the dentist and you get your teeth and your mouth taken care of because I'm looking to get rid of, we call them in German, mokloses, they're focal infections, focuses that are blocking the innate healing power of the body from healing and root canals and mercury in the mouth and the wrong kind of implant all interfere with he- healing. I can't get someone better if they have problems with their teeth. So that's one of the first things that I look at. And that's something that I learned over in Europe. I also look at scars on the body because scars also create a big blockage. And so during neural, doing neural therapy, which is injecting procaine and homeopathic remedies to open up scars so the nervous system can reset itself. I work a lot with the lymphatic system to make sure the lymphatic system is flowing because for some reason, medicine just forgot about the lymphatic system. They don't pay. There's there's an ologist for everything. There's a pulmonologist for the lungs. There's the cardiologist for the heart. There's the gynecologist for your lady issues. But there's no lymphologist. It's like it's this such an important system. And there's, they don't even pay any attention to it. And even a lot of holistic doctors forget about it. And to me, you have to have your lymph moving and flowing if you want to have movement and flow in your body, both physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Uh, we also look very deeply at energy and the energetics and biophotons and light movement and therapies in the body. I look deeply at constitutions. So it's very individualized, whereas I'm looking at what's your constitution? How do you handle toxins? You know how everyone is different. Some women are naturally... 
um, very skinny. They can eat whatever they want. And then there are other women who gain weight. And so a lot of this has to do with how we process our toxins, what our constitution is. And so I take that into account, which means everyone's treatments are quite different, even if they're coming for the same issue. Wow. Fascinating. I suddenly feel like I need to have my teeth cleaned. (laughs) (laughs) I know a good dentist in Phoenix. (laughs) You know, I just scribbled down here. Sharon Stills, dentist recommendation. I'm going to be asking. So don't don't you think I won't? (laughs) Okay. I want to ask about thermography because that also came up so what is what is so special about your thermography machine and and maybe just let's unpack what that is so thermography many of you listening may have heard of thermography as an alternative to mammography for checking your breasts Mm -hmm. and if you have many of you if you've chosen to go and do that you probably just had a picture taken of your breasts. And then they showed you, oh, look, you have red here, you have heat, that's not good. Because we know that if there's a tumor forming, angiogenesis will take place, which is the production of more blood vessels to feed the tumor. And so we can see that through a higher heat reading. And so that is a good thing to see. However, the camera thermographies are limited, and they're not really developed. That form of thermography was really developed for like the military to evaluate bridges and things. So there's a lot lost in the interpretation for your body. The kind of thermography machine I use comes from Germany and it's contact regulation thermography. So I actually have a handheld device. It looks like a little magic wand that takes temperature readings from 119 points throughout your body. And because I am a holistic doctor. It means I treat all of you. I don't say, oh, you have a problem with your lungs, go see the lung doctor or go see the holistic lung doctor. I can handle it all because it's all connected. And so by taking all these points, I'm taking points on your breasts, but I'm also taking readings on your lymphatic system. And this is the only diagnostic tool that I know of that will actually evaluate your lymphatic system. And I think part of why the lymphatic system is so overlooked, because we have no way to really measure it typically. There's no blood test for it. So no one really thinks about it. But I can tell you when I do thermography scans, and I've been doing these pretty much as maybe I've been practicing over 20 years, I've probably been doing them 19 years I never see someone right off the bat who has a healthy lymphatic system. They're always blocked. They're always inflamed and we need to get them moving. So the lymphatic system is a really important piece of breast health. If you think about your breasts, a lot of breast cancer starts in that upper outer quadrant by your underarms. And that's where there's a lot of lymphatic tissue. And so the thermography is looking at the lymphatic system. We talked about the dentistry. So it's also measuring all the teeth. So I can see, is there blocked regulation? And so regulation is how does your body respond to a stress? Because I always say, if you want to get rid of stress, you have to die. If you're alive, you're going to have stress. It's The name of the game is not getting rid of stress. It's how do you respond to your stress? How do you dance with your stress? What's your relationship with stress? And do you have resilience? Can you go through a stressful experience and then come down to your baseline without it trashing you? And so we're looking at all these pieces in the thermography to see how you're regulating. So I'm looking at how your lymphatic system is regulating, how your dentistry is regulating. Do I see, I just had a patient the other day who I didn't like the way her breast results looked. She had a lot of factors going on. And then I looked and the tooth that I mentioned before, that tooth on the stomach meridian was blocked. And then of course, when I asked her, yes, she has a root canal in that tooth. And so not something she wanted to hear, but she's going to have to go get that root canal pulled. And then when you pull a root canal, then there's the question of, well, what kind of implant, what are you going to do? And you have to make sure you get a non-toxic implant because the typical implants that are out there are made of titanium, and that's just as toxic as mercury is in the mouth. And so it's quite a rabbit hole we start digging down. And so in the thermography, there's 13 criteria we look at to see if there's an issue or a concern with the breast. And it includes 
lymphatic. It includes the teeth. It includes your liver, your stomach, your sternum, which is your breastbone. It includes all of these different areas in the body, your ovaries, because they all play a part in whether you're going to have a healthy breast terrain or not. Wow. Okay. You are a wealth of information, girl. <laughs> and and kind of a buzzkill, all I have to say. But <laughs> ask me a fun question. <laughs> okay. Well, I know I happen to know, yes, we read the name of your program. So that the signature red hot sexy menopause program. But before I get to the red hot sexy part, which I know everybody wants to know about, they can't see what I see. And that is that I do my homework and you, when we use the word menopause, you put parentheses around pause. So talk to me. What's that all about? I do because I have, so in addition to being a doctor, I'm also a mindfulness meditation teacher. And that was the other thing I got into early in my med school days. And so I kind of grew up as a doctor thinking that thinking the European way and thinking the mindfulness way, because I truly believe mindfulness is some of the best medicine out there. And so when I was thinking about, oh, I'm really going to focus and bring my knowledge about menopause to the ladies online, I was thinking about the word menopause. And I thought, we think about menopause and typically we think, ugh, I'm going to be hot. I'm going to be sweaty. I'm going to be fat. I'm going to be bitchy. I'm going to be cranky. I'm going to be tired. And we don't really think about, wow, this is, I mean, I know menopause means the cessation, the pause of your menstrual cycle, but I think of it as this really opportunity, really wonderful opportunity to pause in your life and to think about what you want to do with, I call it the sacred second act of your life. And so where have you been, where are you in the present, and where do you want to go? Because if we as women don't stop and carve out that space for ourselves, before you know it, we're, we're lying on our deathbed, and then we're thinking back, and we have all these regrets. And I want your life, my life, all of our lives to be fulfilling, whatever that means. So I talk about when I climb Kilimanjaro, and I always caveat that with, that doesn't mean you have to climb Kilimanjaro because that might not be your jam. And that's fine. I'm just into climbing and hiking. That's my thing. But what is it? It could be changing your career. It could be going back and fulfilling your dreams of dancing or singing or writing a book or whatever it is, baking or knitting, or it it doesn't really matter to me. I mean, it matters. I like to know what you're into, but it's about just living your passion. And if we don't pause, we just tend to run through life. And no one's, even our best friends aren't going to really do it for us. It's really our responsibility for ourselves to pause and think about our lives and think about what we want to do. This is For many women, when they go through menopause, if they had kids, the kids are leaving, perhaps going off to college. They are maybe towards the end of a career, or maybe they weren't working and they want to start a career. There's changes going on, not just in your body, but typically outside in your world too, with your relationships, within your family, and so on and so forth. And so I am all about ritual. I'm all about being mindful. I'm all about being in the present moment. And what better time when your body's going through this change to emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, mentally, give yourself space to really stop and think. And I I always like to do this um, exercise with patients where you write your own eulogy how would you want to be eulogized at your funeral? And that sounds kind of morbid. Maybe I'm sound like a buzzkill again, but <laughs> I'm really you're, on a, you're on a roll. Just go with it. <laughs> but, you know, if you write your eulogy of how you want to be remembered and then you actually read it and see, are you living that? Are you living the things that when it is your time to transition, those things can be said about you and they'll be true. And if they're, if, you're not living them, well, now's a good time to start rearranging your life so you can start living them. 
And so when we pause, I created a method for women who work with me one-on-one where we really pause together. We do this either via telemedicine or women fly out. I do little mini personalized retreats, which I love because I think retreats are very medicinal and that we always go on a family vacation every year, but we should also go on a personal self-love, self-care retreat every year to just regenerate and be still for a moment. And so you press pause, you evaluate your life. Then I assess the physical health because most women and men, but we're talking to women here, don't, we walk around, I call it the myth of the magic bullet. And we walk around, if you just go to a primary care doctor and you have your EKG, your blood pressure and your complete blood count and your cholesterol panel run every year, and you're told you're fine, you're kind of walking around with this false sense of security that you're healthy. Health is so much deeper than that. And the kind of evaluations I do on physical health range from hormone testing done the correct way and looking at your microbiome and your gut and looking at your toxicity levels and looking at your regulation of your body. And so it's really important that we assess our physical health. We are physical beings. We are in the physical body and we need to pay attention and support that physical body. And then after we've done that, the you in pause is for unraveling what you'd love your life to look like. So we get to get into the manifestation, the creation. We get to create the life of our dreams. And sometimes we just have to stop to make time to do that. And then the S stands for stepping into your second act, where we put this all together and have you on a wonderful life protocol that is addressing all areas that were out of balance. And then the E stands for enjoying and ensuring the lasting changes. And so that means we have to keep watering ourselves. If you get a plant and it's beautiful and you water it once, then you don't water it again. The beauty is going to fade and it's going to die. And the same goes for us. A lot of women will ask me, Dr. Stills, how long do I have to stay on these bioidentical hormones? And I'm like, I don't know about you, but I'm going to be buried with mine just in case, you know, you never know what happens. <laughs> I want to make sure I have them with me. Like these are a lifetime, these are a lifetime gig because bioidentical hormones, we think of them as, oh, I need them to stop my hot flashes. But bioidentical hormones help us to age gracefully. They help prevent and protect against Alzheimer's. They help support our bones and protect against osteoporosis. They help our cardiovascular health. They help our skin. They help our sex drive. They help so many things that I don't see them as just something you take for symptom relief. I see them as part of an aging plan for being healthy and enjoying your life to the fullest. Oh, I love that. Love, love, love that concept. Okay. So now I'm going to ask you to give a few juicy details or a tease without giving away the whole thing. I know you've got this red, hot, sexy menopause program. It, tell us a little bit about it. Tease it just a little bit because I know it's starting around the corner. And of course, everybody at this time of year is thinking, this is my year, right? Yeah. <laughs> I want to start strong right now. So share a little bit about it. That is exactly why I made the program start on January 11th. I figured let's give everyone a week to recover. <laughs> right. But let's let's get on board while we're still in that new year, new me kind of phase because it makes me sad when I go to the hot, well, it makes, so it makes me sad and it makes me annoyed all at the same time. Cause so I go to the hot yoga room in January and it's so jammed and I'm like, Oh, I want my space. <laughs> I'm used to there being 10 people in class and now there's 40 because that's because everyone is on their January health kick. But then when they all leave, it makes me sad because I think, wow, they didn't stick with it. It was just a phase and they're just back where they were back in the same repetitive cycle of not making good choices, of not putting their self and their health as a priority. And to me, it's really corny, but your health is your wealth. And it doesn't matter what you have. If you don't have your health, nothing else really matters because you can't even really enjoy it if you're sick. And so I wanted to do this. It's six-week class and I wanted to do it now so I can teach you tools and mindset 
and things that you can do at home to get you through. We finish on February 15th, right after Valentine's Day. So we'll have some nice self-love time there. But to get you through so that you're through the hump and this is something you can really own. The I'm going to start my diet or I'm going to start my workout Monday mentality is always going to fail. It's what are you going to do now? I, I I think of the word kaizen which is Japanese, and it means small little steps. And that's how change really occurs. We make small little steps. And so what are the things we're going to do so we get wins in our life and we change our neural circuitry so we feel good about ourselves and we feel empowered and we keep up with our good, healthy lifestyle choices? So we're going to talk about nutrition and hydration and stress. And we're going to talk about our breasts and how to keep them healthy and hormones. And I, I'm i not going to be able to prescribe if you're in the class, but what I can do is tell you what you should be looking for from the doctor you're seeing, tell you how hormones should be administered, tell you what kind of testing you should get. Because I can tell you, I see so many patients that have been on hormones and even with doctors that call themselves holistic doctors, but they're totally being administered wrong. They're not being monitored correctly. Women are overdosed. They're underdosed. They're not supporting their liver. They're not supporting their lymphatic system. And when I make the tweaks, it's like this light bulb goes on for them. They're like, ah, I feel so amazing. And so we're going to talk all about that. I'm going to talk about the energetics of healing and just be available to answer questions and really help women to dive in and get the tools they need to make the choices. And so many things, lifestyle is such a huge, huge player in getting healthy. And so there are lots of fancy things I do and genetic testing and fancy testing and all these things. And then there's all these lifestyle things that are equally, if not more important to really harness your health and make this time, whether you're perimenopausal, menopausal, postmenopausal, the healthiest time of your life. I can honestly say that I am healthier now at 53 than I was in my 20s, without a doubt. I am definitely aging backwards. That is an awesome thing to state. I love it. Absolutely love it. It has been an absolute pleasure to have you here, and I thank you so much for teasing and sharing the information about the Red Hot Sexy program. And so for listeners, I just want to make sure we're actually going to have the link in the show notes, but you can go to flipping50.com forward slash Red Hot Sexy. I just like stringing those three words together and saying it more and more. So there you go. Red Hot Sexy. Let me just, I didn't say, but so red is actually stands for a lot of people think I made it red because my hair is red. But <laughs> but red actually is an acronym for reinventing your health, exploring your spirit, and discovering your sexy. And so it's my take on the mind body principle because I really believe you have to reinvent your health and that you can reinvent your health at any time, at any age, no matter what anyone has told you. And once you've got your physical body handled and we know everything is balanced, then you can ex- start to explore your spirit because sometimes anger or trauma or fear or depression or not being present or being addicted to stress and chaos gets in the way of you being healthy. And then once you have all these things handled, then you get to discover your sexy. And yes, we're going to talk about sex and we're going to talk about libido. We're going to talk about masturbation and all these fun things. But to me also, sexy is individualized for everyone. And so it's about you finding out what sexy means to you because sexy is not just the way you look. It's the way you talk. It's the way you think. It's the way you move. It's the way you participate in the world and in your life. And so I'm really about everyone, every woman who I work with, who hears my work, even for you today, just to really inquire and think, what is sexy to me and how am I embracing that? Absolutely love it. Thank you so much. Okay, so best place to learn about the course is flipping50.com forward slash red hot sexy. 
Sharon, where's the best place for listeners to get more Sharon <laughs> to, <laughs> to connect with you online? So I am on Instagram at Dr. Sharon Stills. I'm also on Facebook at Dr. Sharon Stills. And I, I actually go live a lot on my personal page, which is Sharon Levy Stills. And so I tell people to friend request me because I, I go on there a lot and talk about everything. And so there's there's lots of places to find me. <laughs> Great. Fantastic. Well, okay. Listeners, it's your turn. So if you have a question that you wish I would have asked Dr. Stills, or you have a question that actually came up as she was talking because she gave so much juicy information that really, we I've been doing this for nine years now. I haven't heard a lot of the information she shared with it. So very refreshing. If you have a question, you can add that below the show notes and that'll be at flipping50.com forward slash red hot. So don't confuse the two. Okay. <laughs> so show notes are just red hot. There you go. All right. And what are you waiting for listeners? Let's start flipping 50 today. <laughs> <laughs>